So, back at CES 2020, AMD unveiled their new third generation Ryzen Mobile processors. And these were very exciting for a number of reasons. First of all, it was the first appearance of the Zen 2 architecture on laptops. Previously, we'd only seen it on desktops. You can check out my comparison of original Zen versus Zen 2 on desktop that I did last summer. So we were getting that, all the new improvements there, the improved architecture, seven nanometer process node, etc., And also eight cores in a laptop, like an Ultrabook with eight cores. This thing right here has eight cores in it. Let's check it out. So, as is probably obvious by now, I have finally managed to get my hands on one. Obviously, there have been very many delays with the, the, the pandemic and all that going on, but I finally got one, so here's what we're working with today. Two laptops to be compared, both same HP Envy X360 15 inch, so it's the same laptop, same design, same chassis, everything. Direct comparison just between the two different processors. On the old model, we have a Ryzen 5 2500U, that's four cores, eight threads, two gigahertz base clock, 3.6 gigahertz boost clock, I believe. And for the new one, we have the new Ryzen 7 4700U. Now, yes, I'm comparing a Ryzen 5 to a Ryzen 7, but for being entirely honest, in the 2000 series and even the 3000 series, the difference between the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 mobile was like 200 megahertz, maybe. There wasn't really any noticeable difference. So that's that. This time around though, the Ryzen 5 model only has six cores, while the Ryzen 7 model has eight cores. So here we have eight cores and eight threads. We're losing out on simultaneous multi-threading, but we're doubling the actual physical core count. Same two gigahertz base clock, but this time we're boosting up to 4.1 gigahertz. And we have obviously all the other IPC and other multi-threaded improvements that come with the Zen 2 architecture. So I'm very excited to compare this Zen 1 quad core to a Zen 2 8 core, but all in laptops. Now, coming into this, my expectation was maybe 30% increase in single-threaded performance, 80% increase in multi-threaded performance. Now, while we have double the core count, it's the same thread count, so we're not necessarily going to get double the performance, was my thought. Um, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this thing has really come through and has exceeded expectations. So, let's get right into the benchmark, shall we? I ran six different tests, measuring different things from, you know, multitasking, productivity, you know, encoding stuff, to also gaming applications. I ran the obvious Cinebench R20, single and multi-threaded tests, because can't be a benchmark video without Cinebench. I ran a Blender export, the classroom benchmark, so that measures, you know, 3D modeling and encoding performance there. I also exported a 1080p video in Premiere Pro. So it was a 4K timeline, but exported in 1080p. I then took that video and downscaled it to 720p using Handbrake. So those are my sort of workstation benchmarks, Cinebench, Blender, Premiere, and Handbrake. And I also ran a couple of gaming benchmarks, no actual games, because I don't actually really own any games that would be that demanding that could run on it. Um, so I did Unigen Superposition, um, just default settings, 1080p medium, I believe. And then I also ran CryEngine's Neon Noir open source ray tracing benchmark um, at 720p ultra settings. So let's get into the results, shall we? First of all, Cinebench multi-threaded score, the 2500U, had a score of 1245, while the new 4700U, 2505. That's literally double the performance, a little bit more then double the performance between these two laptops just two years apart. That is absolutely insane, double. Now the single threaded side of things also exceeded expectations, going from 293 to 465. That's a 58.7% increase in single threaded performance. Now, part of it is the improvements in IPC that come with the new Zen 2 architecture, but part of it is also the clock speeds. Running these tests on the 2500U, I saw on multi-threaded applications, Clock speeds usually stayed around the 2.1, 2.2 gigahertz range. Single threaded, they go up to 3.1, 3.2. But here, oh my goodness, here, multi-threaded, I'd easily see them go to 2.9, 3 gigahertz on all cores. Single threaded, hit 4 gigahertz. I actually saw a laptop hit an Ultrabook 
with eight cores hit four gigahertz. It was absolutely amazing. So we're getting some serious improvements here. Next, Blender. Again, as I mentioned, the Classroom benchmark. The 2500U had a render time of 38 minutes and 37 seconds, while the newer Zen 2 chip, 20 minutes, 45 seconds. That's right, it took only 53% of the time. So basically, when you count for overhead, double the performance. Premiere Pro, same story. It was literally more than double the performance, less than half of the time to render on this new eight core part than on the last gen. Handbrake, again, same story, took half the time. Half the time, double the performance in multi-threaded applications. And clearly this is not just in synthetic synthetic benchmarks like Cinebench, in real world applications, in actual rendering and encoding, we are seeing it take half the time as before. Now we also got a new GPU, it is still Vega, it's not Navi, but it's based on the new seven nanometer design that we saw in the Radeon 7 um, last year. So Unigen Superposition, we saw the minimum FPS go up 40%, the average FPS go up 35% and the score also go up 35%. That is impressive, if I do say so myself. And the CryEngine Neon Noir Ray Tracing benchmark, we saw an increase of 55% in the score. So overall, in these six tests, what can we say about this new laptop? Well, for the same price, this was $900 and that one was I think $800, but I got more storage in this one as well. We are getting eight full cores in an Ultrabook, and not just eight cores, eight Zen 2 cores, hitting crazy high clock speeds for a laptop, easily three, four gigahertz, things that we normally would have seen on desktop normally a few years ago, now here in this super thin and light Ultrabook, and it's just kicking ass is really all I can say. From one laptop to the next in two years, I am literally doubling my performance in the test that I do multi-threaded applications, and an easy increase of 30-50% in single-threaded applications and gaming applications, which is just insane. I've been saying that a lot in this video, I know, but it seriously is insane. Um, moral of the story, this is a very, very, very powerful new processor, and you should be very proud of themselves that they're able to ship this kind of a performance increase, just this kind of performance at all, in an Ultrabook. So that's all for this benchmarks video, pretty brief, and it's mostly just me saying, oh, that's insane. Um, but if you guys enjoyed, I hope you guys are as amazed as I am. And if you wanna see a full review of this laptop and any of the changes from the previous model two years ago, not just the new performance, definitely make sure to stay subscribed because I've already started working on it. And it's already going to be interesting, I think. So definitely stay subscribed for that. Other than that, if you like this video, definitely leave a like. Leave a comment down below if you've gotten your own Ryzen 4000 mobile processor. Let me know how you've been liking it. Let me know how it's been performing for you. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next one.